Okay, I'm just going to read um, a couple of poems from a new collection called Overlap, which is about being a granddaughter and the tiny amount of time it seems between being a granddaughter and becoming a grandmother. And also the circularity of that time and the importance of memory, even for small things, really small things. This one's called Collusion. From my vantage point under the kitchen table, I watch her knees as she walks by, dimpled, thick stockinged in summer and winter, slippers with holes at the toes, crossover pinny pockets full of scraps and peelings for chickens. Grandma Harriet. We mash tea leaves and bran for the rabbit, the sweet aroma fogging her glasses, and every day she scrubs bloody butcher's aprons for five shillings a week. We take the clean ones back on the bus until the day she faints outside boots in the rain, sliding down the wall like in a cartoon her wartime hat slipping over her eyes. Thinking she is dead, I run into the chemist. A man brings her a glass of water. Sipping it, she squeezes my arm. Don't tell him, she says, pulling me close. This will not be difficult, as in all my seven years, he has never spoken to me. Um, okay, this is which. W-I-T-C-H, which? The bad winter of 63 brought freezing fog, wind sharp enough to gild a ram, blizzards that obliterated landmarks so we couldn't tell where we were on our own road. Winifred tied a washing line from front door to gatepost. Hoarfrost sparkled on the inside of windows, blanked the view, gave rooms an unearthly pallor. As soon as we went outside, ice formed on our eyelashes, making blinking sharp and interesting. In those days, everyone cleared their doorstep, path or patch of pavement, no matter how small or expansive. So children were sent out with broom or shovel to earn their pocket money and young fathers put their back into it. And the old woman we thought was a witch in her shawl, crunching through a week's compacted snow, struggling with a string bag of provisions, fell on her untouched icy path, and we laughed. They say that in the Arctic, breath freezes, crackles, hangs in the air before falling to the ground. I pull my shawl around my shoulders, pick up my broom. Okay, um, this one is unease and it's uneasy unease i remember the first time worry rocked my little world thinking about it now there had been an almost palpable sense of unease for days i felt something in the air something unspoken between adults a feeling recognized a few times since now almost permanently in the pit of the stomach I caught words as they flew by from the six o'clock news in the unusually silent living room where no one thought to lay a fire and routine seemed to have gone out the window. Bay of Pigs and Cuba and Russia made me think of pink pig snouts sticking out of the water as they swam and played in the sun and of countries whose stamps were as yet uncollected. This is cocktails, um, a bit dark even for me. Um, I dreamt this, it was a dream I had um, the night before my mum's funeral, so I literally dreamt it, end of 2019 before Covid. Cocktails. Choosing from the extensive menu, I'll have a dementia daiquiri, says the monster that sits on high, invisible straw pushed through her skull sipping when it suits from this unholy cocktail. A bit today, a bit tomorrow. Till finally in the slush at the bottom, waiting to be sucked up is the best bit, the thickest, tastiest part, the part that knows who we are, where all the love that she has left is. It's a race, 
to keep that part as long as possible until all that's left is the empty container where she used to be. And he shouts, get me another, moves on.